The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Madam Chair, yesterday uh, I was out at Bethesda and I saw a young fellow that uh, was wounded two years ago. And when he was wounded, uh, his, his internal organs were outside the body for almost 10 days. And he's been putting up with that uh, ever since, uh, until he came back to Bethesda and had an operation just recently where they were able to take the bag away that he had and restore his uh, internal organs. That's what this bill's all about. This defense bill is all about taking care of the troops, making sure they have what they need. Uh, Bill Young and I worked together uh, going to the hospital, seeing the, the wounded. We listened to what they say and what they need. We listened to them at the bases. We had 37 hearings this year, 51 trips that the staff made all over the country to visit the various uh, installations to find out what the problems were. Uh, I was out at Fort Carson, where the commanding officer, and this is not something uh, that uh, I'm divulging, this is something that's already known, his one boy was killed in Iraq, and his other son committed suicide before he was sworn in. So he's been emphasizing how do you reduce suicides in the military. The units came back, we've just found, have had some terrible problems uh, uh, with people uh, robberies and, and, and actually homicides, some of the actual units, at least allegedly, that's what we've seen in the newspaper. These troops are under a tremendous strain. Uh, they're deployed too often. When I talked to the 12 troops there at Fort Carson and Fort Benning, they all told me the biggest single problem is the long deployments and the lack of time at home. And Jerry Lewis, who was chairman of the subcommittee, and Bill will tell you the same thing. We talked to the troops. They talk about how they need more time at home, they need to spend some time at home, and even when they're home, they're training. They don't have an opportunity to uh, uh, visit with their families as long as they would, uh, as they would like. Uh, we've had hundreds of meetings with members of Congress, uh, hundreds of input from members of Congress uh, on the floor and in the committee room, uh, trying to make sure we put a bill together that was bipartisan. We've been partners in this thing the whole way through. And we've tried to make sure in the thrust of this bill has been for the department to start hiring more people and getting rid of the contractors. In other words, get rid of the contractors and hire people because contractors cost $44,000 more. Well, we just find uh, every time we turn around, we find somebody at the lower level is making, making uh, uh, all kinds of uh, changes in that policy and we worry about it. Uh, in, in this bill, uh, we have uh, a, a number of things that we've done that, that help not only military families, but do research for long term. We put the first money in, for instance, for military pay, we raised them five tenths of a percent above the request. Uh, first class medical care is one of the things that we stress. Uh, uh, peer reviewed research programs. 150 million for breast cancer research, 80 million for prostate cancer research, 30 million for orthopedic research, 25, amazing thing. The military didn't have any money in for these kind of things until we stepped in and the subcommittee uh, is in the forefront of making sure that that gets done. $472.4 million for family advocacy programs. Uh, I, I could go on and on. Uh, 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 I don't want to go too long in this, this debate, but uh, <clears throat> let me, uh, let me rever reserve the, the, the uh, balance of my time. And the gentleman from Pennsylvania reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from Florida is recognized. Well, Madam Chairman, I yield myself such time as I might consume, and I would like to state my support for this bill. As Mr. Murtha, the Chairman Murtha has said, uh, the subcommittee worked together without any regard to politics or Republican or Democrat uh, to build well, a legis legislative appropriation bill that we thought would take care of training requirements for our military, equipment requirements for our military, and force protection requirements for our military. And we did the best we could uh, with the money that we had available. And we did it together, and we did it in a totally non-political way. So I rise in strong support of this bill. 
The, well, there will likely be several amendments uh, that we may not be able to agree with, uh, and we'll talk about those a, a little bit later. But one thing I wanted to mention is I said that we, would, we did the best we could with what we had to work with. We were, were under the President's budget request. Our 302B allocation was reduced. We're over last year by about 4%. So that's, that's a plus. It disturbs me a little bit, though, when I see that the foreign aid bill was 33 percent above last year's bill, and our national defense appropriations bill is only 4 percent above last year's bill. But still, we did the best that we could uh, with what we had to work with. Now, we will, uh, we will have amendments that will be offered. I, I, I suspect they're not going to be offered tonight, though. I suspect sometime tomorrow they'll be offered. And there will be some disagreement uh, on some of those amendments. We'll discuss those later. But one thing I wanted to mention is air superiority. We're not going to have enough time on the amendment that's offered to deal with the future of air superiority for the American military. Mr. Murth and I and many of our members have traveled to far-flung parts of the world where our troops were deployed. We have talked personally to thousands of our men and women in uniform, not only here at home, but in places like, well, like Korea, like Bosnia, like Kosovo, uh, like Afghanistan and Iraq and Kuwait and all of these places. Uh, and our soldiers tell us, you know, we'll go, we'll go anywhere. We'll fight whatever battle we're told to fight. But please make sure that if there's an airplane above the battlefield, that it belongs to the United States, that it does not belong to a threatening enemy. And that's one of the things that we will be talking about with the issue of the F-22. The air superiority, that F-22 is uh, supposedly our air supporty aircraft. Uh, it will replace the F-15, which is today's tremendous airplane, but it's our air support superiority aircraft. Uh, we cannot afford to take a chance and risk the lives of troops on the ground if we don't secure the air overhead. The Defense Department has suggested that with the, the limit of 187 new F-22s, or total of 187 F-22s, that this is a medium to high risk or air superiority on the part of the United States. And I think we ought to take that, despite the fact that there's a veto threat on going above the 187, if the Defense Department believes that this is a medium to high risk, I think we ought to pay close attention to that. But we'll talk more in detail about that when we, when we deal with the amendment that we expect uh, to deal with. The, we're told that the Joint Strike Fighter is coming on board and will uh, Fill, will fill up the gap if we don't have enough F-22s. But to begin with, the Joint Strike Fighter is a different mission aircraft than the F-22. Just like the F-16 was a different mission aircraft than the F-15, but they work together in partnership. And if the F-35, the Joint Strike Fighter, is going to take up the gap, we better do some serious thinking, because the F-35 is not ready to fight. It is not ready to do its mission, let alone the mission of air superiority. We have spent some $37 billion in development of the Joint Strike Fighter, and we have been in development and ready to go to production just now this year, funding for production. But we started in 1997 to create this aircraft, and here it is, 2009. The aircraft is still not ready to be deployed. So how is that aircraft going to fill the gap if we need fighters to maintain air superiority? But there's a lot more on this issue we'll talk about later. I just, uh, basically the bill today provides for additional uh, F-22s, and that's the way we like it. And I reserve the balance of my time.